I am a physician and I think about patients and I think about ways of using technologies to try to make patients' lives happier and healthier. Mm -hmm. And one area may be in diabetes. We know patients with diabetes need to check their blood glucose many times a day. Mm -hmm. And so we're working on ways to come up with seamless ways of checking glucose, providing information quickly. How can we actually make someone go through the day in a better place? So that's an area where we've been spending a lot of time focusing. So you're working on smart contact lenses, smart spoons for, for Parkinson's patients, you know, nanoparticle pills that could identify cancer or heart attacks before they happen. Um, you got a shout out on the earnings call for actually driving revenue. What are the most revenue driving projects that you're working on? Certainly. Well, this is an area where it is ripe for innovation. And so areas like diabetes, and you mentioned some of our key partnerships, whether it's with Dexcom, which is a real leader in treating patients with diabetes. We have a partnership right now with Sanofi, and we also have one in the space of surgical robotics with Johnson & Johnson. Mm -hmm. So these are areas that we think are ripe for innovation. David? Yeah, I'm curious, Jessica, David Kirkpatrick here in New York. Is it products and revenue that is your top priority? Because looking at the website, it sounds a lot like just making people healthier is a big part of it too. And obviously Google has some sort of, sort of you might say, tertiary ways of making money. I'm, I'm curious whether it's all about products or whether there's a somewhat vaguer mission of just working towards greater human health broadly. It really is about human health. And the way I think about the products are just a means of understanding what it means to be healthy, what it means to have a diagnosis, what it means to have a disease. So if you think about the product that may help someone understand their glucose levels, this is a way to help them manage their health. So it's not a products company, but it's a company really focused on trying to shift the needle when it comes to health and disease. But is that necessarily going to be tied to products and revenue for you to feel that you've succeeded? We tend to have a very mission-driven company, and as you mentioned in the last segment, the idea of coming up with services that can help people is truly at the heart of what we do. At the same time, we are a wholly owned subsidiary of Alphabet, and we have a responsibility in that regard. So do you have to raise money on your own, or do you get it from Alphabet? So we are well-funded, and then we have very strong collaborations. As I mentioned earlier, we have academic collaborations. Stanford and Duke are some of our partners. We're working with Johnson & Johnson, Dexcom, Sanofi, and Novartis. So we are in a position to really take on challenges that are even bigger than what some companies would be right. able to do. And you say well-funded by Alphabet. We are wholly owned subsidiary by right. Alphabet. So what, aside from then the funding, what does uh, being part of Alphabet enable you to do that a typical independent biotech startup wouldn't be able to do? Sure. We have a whole portfolio. So there's some things that we're able to work on that are going to hopefully change patient care maybe in the next years. But when you work in this environment, you're able to think big. You're able to do things that may have a time horizon that requires rigorous science, that requires the right studies. But anyone who's been a scientist and as a clinical trialist, I know how long it takes to make a difference in the life science space. So it allows us to take that kind of investment. So, uh, you know, we've seen some hot biotech startups go wrong this year. You know, what have you learned from that experience about managing expectations of the public? Three key messages. One is that scientific rigor is always going to be at the core of what we do. Mm -hmm. The second thing is building teams of engineers. We have some leaders from Google. And then we have scientists, someone like Tom Insel, who was the director of the National Institute of Health that focused on the mental health issues. And then we have many individuals who have been in this space. That's key. The third thing is work towards transparency. And I think if we work on these three things, then we're going to be able to do something different.